All right, so today we're talking about oxidation reduction. We're going to talk about how we identify redox reactions. We're going to do the whole works. Okay. Um, so redox is shorthand for oxidation reduction, right? That's a long word, oxidation reduction. That's a long word, but we call it redox for short. Okay. Oxidation reduction reactions uh, involve transfer of electrons. Remember last week when we talked about acid base? Using the Bronsted Lowry model, we said acid base reactions transfer H, right? When we did acid base reactions using the Bronsted Lowry model of an acid and a base, we said, okay, uh, Bronsted acid and Bronsted base, they donate or accept H, right? Oxidation reduction reactions uh, involve transfer of electrons, transfer of electrons. And we're going to assign oxidation numbers to show the gain or loss. So that should say oxidation numbers, not just numbers, oxidation numbers. Okay, and we abbreviate oxidation number, I should put that in there, O N, because oxidation number is a long word, right? So I just call it O N for short. So oxidation numbers, they show the gain or the loss. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to assign oxidation numbers because this is not something we've done yet. And then we'll look at the before to the after and decide, okay, who gained electrons and who lost electrons. Okay. So don't confuse redox with acid base, right? In acid base, we talked about the Bronsted-Lowry model of acids and bases, and we said acids and bases transfer around H+. Right? Redox are going to be transferring around electrons, but it's going to be the similar premise. We're going to compare before to after and then look at the change. And based on what changed, we'll be able to figure out what got oxidized and what got reduced. Okay? So we've got some rules that you need to commit to memory. So make a note to yourself that these rules, you need to memorize them. Okay? So put a note, big star, write, memorize me. Okay? Because you're going to have to memorize your rules for oxidation numbers. Now, there are some rules that always apply, and then there are some rules that usually apply. So we're going to begin with our always rules, and then we'll do our usually rules. So the oxidation number of a pure element is always zero. Okay? So for instance, if I said sodium metal, that's oxidation number of zero. If I said chlorine gas, chlorine gas is diatomic, Cl2 but it's still a pure element, pure element in its most stable form, its oxidation number will be zero. If I said iron metal, right, that would be Fe solid. So a pure element is always zero. Okay, that includes diatomic gases as well. Okay, so Cl2, Br2, I2, F2, O2, N2, H2, right? All of those diatomic gases fall under this category as well. Okay, so a pure element, always zero. That's a pretty easy rule to remember, right? A monatomic ion is its charge. That's an easy rule to remember too, right? So if we're talking about sodium ion, that's Na+, plus, so its oxidation number would be plus one, okay? If we're talking about chloride, chloride, the ion, that's Cl minus, right? Its oxidation number would be minus one. So if it's a monatomic ion, its oxidation number is its charge, whatever the charge is, plus one, minus three, plus three, right? It's whatever the charge is. So that's an easy rule to remember too. So far these rules are pretty easy. Oxygen in a compound is always minus two, except in a peroxide. So for instance, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, right? That's the only exception that you need to know about for oxygen in this class. Oxygen in a compound, so for instance in H2O, it would be minus two. If we're talking about hydrogen peroxide, that's the only ex um, exemption to that rule that you need to be aware of. It's minus one in hydrogen peroxide. It's minus two every other time in a compound. Now, O2 as a gas, that'd be zero. Right, so make sure you distinguish between oxygen in a compound versus pure oxygen, O2 gas. Right? O2 gas would be zero. Oxygen in a compound would be minus two. Okay, and then there's just one teeny little exception in hydrogen peroxide. That's the exception to that rule. So you'll see that one 
out of 100 towns, right? So you don't deal with peroxides a whole lot in this class. But I want to show you that rule now so that if you go on to take general chem, you'll remember this because we're going to do this in general chem as well. Okay, group one elements. So that's hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, francium, those guys, all group one, right? Those are always plus one. So if you're looking at your periodic table, right, those guys are always plus one. In compounds, in compounds, right? If you're talking about sodium metal, that's a pure element, that would be zero. But if we're talking about sodium in, say, sodium chloride, that'd be plus one. Group two elements in compounds, again, when they're in compounds, so we're not talking about magnesium metal, we're talking about magnesium in magnesium acetate, okay? That would be plus two. And the last one, fluorine in a compound is always minus one. Those are your always rules. These are the rules that you can depend on 100% of the time. Like I said, there's only one exception, that's oxygen and a peroxide, but that's something you're gonna encounter very rarely, especially in intro chem. If you go on to take general chem, you'll see some more exceptions. But these are the only exceptions you're responsible for knowing in intro chem. Has everybody got this down? These are the rules that must be committed to memory. Okay, these are the always rules. These are the rules that we start with. Okay, because there are a lot of elements that we're not going to have any rules for, and we're going to have to figure out what their oxidation numbers are by using our known values. Okay, so if we have an unknown, we can use our known to figure out the unknown. Now, these are our usually rules. Usually <coughs> means not always, right? So group three, that would be boron, aluminum, etc. Usually plus three, not always, usually plus three. Group five, so that would be um, nitrogen, potassium, arsenic, antimony, etc. Usually, not always, plus five. And group seven, so that's what we call the halogens, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, etc. Usually minus one, but not always. Group three, usually plus three. Group five, usually plus five. Group seven, usually minus one. Now again, I call these usually rules because they're not always rules, right? So I say, oh, you know, she's usually pretty nice. That means that there are some times that she's not pretty nice, right? Usually, not always. Now here are the two most important rules. For a neutral compound, in other words, a compound that does not have a charge, right? A neutral compound, the sum of the contributions of the oxidation numbers must add up to zero. So in other words, if the compound has a charge of zero, then all the contributions need to add up to zero as well. And when you see examples of this, it'll make a lot more sense. And then if it's a polyatomic ion, like nitrate or sulfate, ammonium, right? If it's a polyatomic ion, the sum of the contributions of oxidation numbers must equal the overall charge. So if we're talking about sulfate, right, sulfate has a minus two charge, right, so all of my contributions need to add up to minus two. So this rule means that all of our contributions, that means oxidation number times how many, must add up to either zero if it's neutral or the charge if it's a polyatomic ion. And so now we're going to spend some time doing examples. That's 
we're going to do. Just example after example after example, and then I'm going to give you some to do, and we'll go over those. Because this is the part where we have to get mastery of how to assign oxidation numbers. Because you can't do redox until you assign oxidation numbers. All right, so what I want to do is blank slide in there, so it's just empty, and I'm just going to jot these off to the side. So here are the examples that we're going to do. We're going to do KMNO4. H2SO4 ClO3 minus. And uh, ZnCl. All right, so these are the examples we're going to go through. I guess I could write that somewhere where it's not in my screen. Not taking up space on the camera. So here's what I recommend that you do as you're getting started. Okay? I recommend that you make a table. Now, once you get good at this, once you've got practice at it, you can probably do it in your head without making this little chart. But until you're good at it, I make a little chart like this. Okay? Because like I said, until you've got the rules really committed to memory, um, you're probably going to be benefit from doing something visual. So this top row is the oxidation number, and the bottom row is the contribution. So if we're doing KMNO4, give every element its own column. Okay? Now, does this compound KMNO4, if we write it out like that, does it have a charge or is it neutral? Is there a charge up here, plus three, minus one? This is neutral, right? So what do all these contributions need to add up to? Zero, right? Neutral compound, no charges. So all these contributions need to add up to zero, okay? So this bottom row is just like for bookkeeping. This top row are our actual oxidation numbers. All right, so let's begin with the elements we know something about. Where's potassium on the periodic table? If you don't have one out, you need to fish one out, or just look at the wall. Where's potassium on the periodic table? Group one, do we know any rules about group one? Yes, what is the rule? Is it an always rule or a sometimes rule? It's an always rule. And so group one elements are always what in compounds? Plus one, right. So it's oxidation numbers plus one. There's only one potassium here, right, because there's no subscript, so we're assuming that means it's just one, right? One times one is one. All right, manganese. Manganese is in the D block, it's a transition metal. Do we have any rules, always or usually, for manganese? For D block elements, nope. So we're gonna skip it. We're gonna have to figure it out. Okay, we're gonna have to solve for it. Oxygen in a compound. Is this hydrogen peroxide, H2O2? No. Nope. So that's our only exception for oxygen. So what is oxygen in a compound? That's an always rule, what is it? It's always minus two, right? And how many of them do I have? Four, so what's the contribution gonna be? Not eight, negative eight, right. Now all these contributions need to add up to zero. So what must the contribution of manganese be? Positive seven, right. And since there's only one manganese, seven contribution means that its oxidation number must also be what? Plus seven. Okay, so if I ask, okay, what are the oxidation numbers? This is your answer, okay? This row is your answers. This row is just your bookkeeping row. Okay, this is just to help you stay organized. This row is your actual answers. 
Okay. Notice the oxidation numbers themselves do not add up to zero. It's the contributions that add up to zero. Okay. Because one plus seven minus two is not zero. Right. It's the contributions that add up to zero. So this bottom row is just to help you stay organized and to solve for any unknowns. All right. That's the whole purpose of that bottom row. It's just to help you keep organized. Does everyone understand how we did H I mean, uh, KMNO4, potassium permanganate? All right, so I had plus one here from my known value, and I, I had minus eight here from four times negative two. Do you agree with these two values? So for this to add up to zero, I said to myself, okay, what number plus one minus eight gives me zero? So that would be seven. And since there's only one manganese, its contribution must be the same as its oxidation number. Does that make sense? That's a good question. I was writing down other stuff and did that. Story. Right, yeah. That's a great question. All right, ready to do another one? Okay, let's do H2SO4. What's the name of H2SO4? H2SO4, that's one you need to know for your test. Sulfuric acid, right. Does that compound have a charge? No, it's neutral. So when we make our chart, the contributions are all going to add up to what number? Zero. Right, so this top number, that's the oxidation row. This is the contribution row, and the contributions all add up to zero, because this is a neutral compound, right? There's no charge. It's not plus three or minus eight. So H2. S O four. Again, we begin with the ones we know. Well, oxygen should readily jump out at you because oxygen is very specifically named. What is oxygen in a compound? This is not hydrogen peroxide, is it? It's not H two O two. So, what is oxygen in a compound always? Plus two, minus two, minus two. And there are four, so its contribution is what? Is what? Negative eight, right? Okay, sulfur's in group six. Group six. Do we have any rules for group six? Always rules or usually rules? No, no rules for group six, so we'll have to skip it and come back to it. Hydrogen's in group one. Plus one, right. And its contribution is? Plus two. So now I say to myself, okay, what number when added to two and negative eight gives me zero? Six. Positive six, right? And there's only one sulfur here, so that means its contribution and its oxidation number are the same. So these are my actual oxidation numbers, the top row. Remember, this bottom row is just for organization. So if I ask you, what's the oxidation number of sulfur, you would say plus six. If I asked you, what's the oxidation number of hydrogen, you would say plus one, not plus two. Plus two is its contribution. It's not its oxidation number. Just like if we order a pizza, right? Class pizza. And everybody has a dollar to chip in. And uh, I, I chip in five dollars, right? Because I'm a teacher. Right? My contribution's gonna be different. So we're not looking, the, the person who delivers the pizza isn't gonna carry over his contribution, it's only interested in the total value, right? So we're looking at these numbers, not these numbers. Because the person who delivers pizza isn't gonna care who chipped in what. <laughs> They're just gonna care that we have the total amount that we need. Is everybody good on H2SO4? Sulfuric acid. All right, let's do chlorate, ClO3 minus. Now we've got something different. Does this compound have a charge? Does this compound have a charge? It does. All right. So how does that change things? Are my contributions going to add up to zero this time? No. What are my contributions going to add up to? Negative one. All right. Because if it's polyatomic ion, the contributions add up to the charge. 
So we've got Cl and O3. Okay, here we've got an interesting situation because chlorine, look at your rules. We said chlorine's in group seven. It's usually minus one. And we've got an always rule for oxygen. Which one do you pick first? Which one do you follow first? The usually rule or the always rule? The always rule, right? Always follow the always rule first. So we don't put minus one here. That's a usually rule. We're going to follow our always rules first because those supersede our usually rules. So what is the oxidation number here? Negative two. Negative two, so it contributes. Okay. Now what does the contribution of chlorine need to be? For this to add up to negative one. Plus five, right. So its contribution is plus five. That's why I said it's a usually rule, right? Just because it's a usually rule doesn't mean there aren't exceptions. Here's an exception. Right? Chlorine is usually minus one. However, it's not always minus one. That's why we're calling it a usually rule, not an always rule. Just like you could say, oh, it's usually faster to take this route. But what if there's a big traffic jam? Well, then we couldn't call it an always rule. Make sense? All right, let's do zinc chloride. Zinc 2 chloride. ZnCl2. Is that a neutral compound or does that have a charge? It's neutral. So my contributions add up to what? Contributions add up to what? Zero. So ZnCl2. Okay, zinc's in the transition metals. It's in the D block. It's element number 30. Do we have any rules for the D block? Mm -hmm. So now we're forced. We have no choice. We're forced to follow that usually rule, right? We're forced to because we don't have any rules for the D block. So what's the usually rule for chlorine? Group 7 is usually minus 1, right? Okay, so minus 1 times 2 gives me negative 2. So what does that make zinc? Plus 2. So these are my oxidation numbers. Plus 2 and minus 1. Remember, the contributions add up to zero. The oxidation numbers themselves will not. Does this make sense? Let's do one more where we have to deal with a parentheses. Let's do Let's do Fe2O3. What's the name of that? That would be iron what? Iron two, iron three, iron one, iron nine, what? Three. What's the anion? Oxide. Okay, this is a neutral compound, right? There's no charge, but we've got some subscripts we're gonna have to deal with here. So let's deal with this one. It's going to add up to zero. Contributions will. Oxidation number. Fe2O3. Now both of them have subscripts. Right? So far, we haven't dealt with one where everybody's got a subscript. We've always dealt with one where there's, we've always dealt with ones where there's at least one substance without a subscript. Iron's a transition metal. It's in the D block. Do we have any rules for iron? No, we can't, we can't follow any rules for iron because there aren't any. We can follow the rules for oxygen, though. Oxygen is what? And there are how many? So it's a minus six. What must the contribution of iron be? Positive six. But now, there are two of them. Right? There are two of them. So to get the oxidation number, you take its contribution and you divide it by the number that you have. So what is six over two? Three, plus three. So those are my contributions. Do you see why we had to divide by three? 
because there, I mean, by two, excuse me, divide by two, because there are two irons. So if the total contribution is plus six, that means each one of them is plus three. Make sense? Make sense? Let's do one more where we're going to have to do a little bit of working backwards. Let's do, um, let's do MG and O3, two. What's the name of that? What's the name of this compound? Magnesium nitrate. Magnesium nitrate, right. Good practice on nomenclature, right? You never can forget how to name. Now this is a neutral compound, right? This compound has no charge. It's not like it's MgNO32 plus nine, right? There is no charges. However, we have something to deal with this time that we haven't dealt with yet, and that's parentheses. We haven't dealt with parentheses yet. So, I will allow you for your chart, just for your chart, to go ahead and distribute that two so it's easier on the eye. So if you want to distribute that two into O6, just for your chart, okay? If you wrote this on a test as the formula for magnesium nitrate, I'd definitely mark you wrong, right? Because that's not the correct formula. But for your chart, so you don't have to deal with remembering this parentheses business, you can go ahead and distribute that too, to make your chart easier on the eye, okay? So, we know we have a rule for oxygen. That one's the easiest one. Oxygen in a compound, because this isn't hydrogen peroxide. Oxygen's gonna be what? Minus two. Minus two, and what's its contribution? Minus 12. Minus 12. All right, now we're between magnesium and nitrogen. What about nitrogen? We have a usually rule, right? But we have an always rule for magnesium. So which one do we follow first, the usually or the always? We follow the always rule first. What's the always rule for magnesium? Magnesium is located where on the periodic table? Magnesium? I think you're thinking about magnesium. Group two, right. Magnesium's in group two. What's the always rule involving group two elements? They're always plus two, right? So that means its contribution, since there's one of them, is what? Plus two. So what must the contribution of nitrogen be for this to add up to zero? Positive 10, right. Now there are two nitrogens in magnesium nitrate. So what's the oxidation number of nitrogen got to be? 10 over 2, right? Because the contribution is 10, but there are two of them. So what's 10 over 2? Plus 5, right? So those are my oxidation numbers. So anytime you have parentheses, if you want to go ahead and distribute that to make your chart flow better, easier to deal with, that's fine. I'll allow it, okay? But don't write this as a formula on a test. And expect to uh, receive full credit because that will not that will not be uh, something you want to do. You don't want to get in bad habits. You guys ready to try some for yourself? I think you know the formula for carbon dioxide, but just in case you don't. All right, you try these. Sulfur trioxide, copper two nitrate, carbon dioxide, aluminum sulfate, nitrate ion, copper metal, iron two ion.
I'll pause the recording while you work on these, and then we will go over them. All right, let's go over these. So I'm actually gonna make this print a little bit smaller. Let's make it like, yeah, so it's not taking up the whole screen. All right, so let's do SO3. Number one disappeared. Oh, wait, it's on the SO3. This is neutral, right? So our contributions are adding up to zero. We don't have any rules for sulfur, right? Sulfur's in group six. No rules for group six. We do have one for, excuse me, oxygen. What is it? Minus two. So a contribution is minus six. So what must sulfur be? Plus six. So these are my answers, right? Remember, these are not your answers. This is your final answer. This is just your bookkeeping problem. Did you get it right? Any questions on SO3? Okay, copper two nitrate. What's the formula for copper two nitrate? CuNO3 two. So we did something very similar to this a few minutes ago. It was magnesium nitrate. So Cu, we can distribute that too just for our chart just to make our chart more manageable. That's up to zero. That's my contribution. This is my actual answer. We don't have any rules for copper, right? It's a transition metal, no rules for it. We have a usually rule for nitrogen, but let's start with our always rule, which is copper oxygen is always minus two, so it contributes minus 12. Now I'm forced to use that usually rule, right? Because I don't have any rules for copper. So what's the usually rule here? It's usually plus five, so it contributes plus 10. So what must copper be? Plus two. Do we agree? Yes. All right. Let's do carbon dioxide. CO2, CO2. Again, after you're good at this, maybe you're already there, you don't need to make this chart anymore. Maybe you're getting to a point where you can just kind of do it in your head. And that's great. If you get to that point, you don't need to show me this chart, okay? I don't need to see that. So, do we have any rules for carbon? We haven't done anything with carbon yet. We don't have any rules for carbon? No. So we have to start with oxygen, so it's Minus two with a contribution of minus four. So what must carbon be? Plus four. Plus four. You at 100% so far? 100% on your self-grading? All right, let's do aluminum sulfate. That one was kind of fun, wasn't it? What's the formula for aluminum sulfate? Al2. Al2. SO4 in parentheses. Okay. So for our chart, if you want to distribute that three, Al2S3O12. Neutral compound, all right? So this is all adding up to zero. Okay, we have a usually rule for aluminum. Let's skip it, come back to it. Do we have any rules for sulfur? Sulfur's in group six, no rules for sulfur. Do we have any rules for oxygen? What is it? Negative two. Negative two, so what does it contribute? Negative 24. Okay, now I'm forced to use that usually rule. All right, what's the usually rule? Uh, aluminum is in group three. What's the usually rule for group three? It's usually what? plus three, so it contributes, what, plus six, okay, so what number plus six minus 24 gives me zero? 
plus 18, right? So if there are three sulfurs that have to contribute plus 18, 18 divided by 3 is what? Plus 6. So 3 plus 3 plus 6 and minus 2. Do we agree on aluminum sulfate? Okay, nitrate ion. Nitrate ion has a charge. Negative one. Negative one. Right. So now all our contributions need to add up to not zero, but negative one. So NO3, because nitrate is NO3 minus. Right? Oxidation number, contribution. Let's begin with the rule that we have at always, which is what? Oxygen, so minus two, so negative six. What must nitrogen be? Plus five. Right? Is that following the usually rule? Nitrogen's in group five. It's usually plus five. So that is following that usually rule. We don't even need to make a chart for number six and number seven. Why? Copper metal is just Cu solid. So what's its oxidation number going to be? That's a pure element. Zero, right. And iron two ion, that would be Fe two plus. Monatomic ion is what? It's charge, right. So no chart needed for number six or number seven. Questions on these seven practice problems? All right, I'm going to pause the recording for a minute so we can take a mental break because we've been at it for an hour. So we'll pause the recording. We'll take a bathroom break slash stand-up break slash get a drink of water break. Okay, now that we've had a nice little mental break, let's do some redox reactions, some actual redox reactions. So first step in doing redox is you have to assign oxidation numbers, which is what we spent the last hour doing. So now we're going to do redox reactions. All right, so... Substance is oxidized when it loses electrons. In other words, its oxidation number goes up. All right, so we just compare before to after. Zinc started out with an oxidation number of zero, and it ended with an oxidation number of two, plus two. How did I know that zinc's oxidation number here was zero? How did I know that this was an oxidation number of zero? Because what is that? That's a pure element, right. It's a pure element, oxidation number is zero. How did I know that this oxidation number was plus two? Because it's a monatomic ion, right. Oxidation number is its charge. So it started out as zero, it went to plus two, right? Electrons are negative, yes, electrons are negative. If you lose something that is negative, your oxidation number is gonna go up. Just like if I said to you, you know what guys, I don't wanna think, I don't think you need to take a test. Nah, I can read your mind and I know you know it, good enough, right? I have removed something that is negative. You'd be a lot happier, unless you're just one of those people who really likes taking tests, right? If I have taken away something that is negative, your mood goes up. Woohoo, no test, right? If you lose something that is negative, your number goes up. So if that happens to you, you are oxidized. Does that make sense? Now let's look at the other side of the coin, because you can't have one without the other, reduction. A substance is reduced when it gains electrons. How did I know that this oxidation number was plus one? How did I know that? Because what is H plus? What is that? That's a monatomic ion, right? Monatomic ion's oxidation number is its charge. How did I know that H2 was zero? That's a diatomic element. Is that okay? That's a pure element, right? That's a pure element. That's how hydrogen exists in its elemental form. It doesn't exist as H. It exists as H2. That's pure element. Right? So it went from plus one to zero. What happened? Something brought it down. What something brought it down? Electrons. So, you know, if I said, okay, you know, the test isn't going to be next week. It's going to be right now. Put everything away. <laughs> You'd be giving me some death looks, right? You would not be very happy, right? I have added something that is negative to your life, and now you are really not happy about it. If you add something that is negative, it's going to bring you down reduced, right? So substance is reduced 
when it gains electrons. Those electrons bring you down. Something is oxidized when it loses electrons, lifts you up. Okay. Do you see the difference between oxidation and reduction? Now I've got two little anacronyms that you can use to help you remember which is which. I don't care which one you use. You can come up with your own. If you do, I'd love to hear about it because I'm always looking for new ones. All right, so just remember electrons are negative. So losing them is going to make your number go up. And gaining them is going to make your number go down. So there are two methods to learn redox. Here's the first one. This is what I learned when I was in high school. True story. Learned it when I was about, what, 15? 16, somewhere around 15, I think. Yeah, 15. Leo the lion says, Grr. So picture a lion. I don't know why a lion. I guess it could be Leo the anything. But my high school teacher used lion, so I went with lion. I guess you can make it Leo the whatever, dragon. Okay, Leo, the animal of your choice, says grr. So what does that stand for? Leo, lose electrons is oxidized. That's what Leo stands for. Lose electrons equals oxidized. That's what the Leo stands for. And the grr, grr, gain electrons equals reduced. Okay, so Leo the lion says grr. Lose electrons equals oxidized. Gain electrons equals reduced. Lose electrons equals oxidized, gain electrons equals reduced. This is the method you'll probably hear me referring to. Like I said, I learned it when I was 15. So it's been upstairs for a while. Um, but there's another method. I learned this when I was in high school. When I was in graduate school, my husband, it wasn't my husband, yeah, maybe that's why I married him. No, not really. He taught me this one. And I know um, they use this one down in biology too. I've heard him say it. Oil rig, oil rig, I've heard him say it down in biology. Oil rig, so what does that stand for? Oil, oxidation is loss of electrons. Make sure you specify, what are you losing there? Because remember, don't think about acid base, right? Because we're thinking about loss of H plus, that's not the same thing as redox, right? So it's oxidation is loss of electrons, that's an important qualifier. What are you losing, okay? Um, because if you try to apply this to acid base, it's something different. Oxidation is loss, rig, reduction is gain. Again, of gain of what? Gain of electrons. So I don't care which method you use, Leo says GER, oil rig, some combination of the two. Um, like I said, if you come up with your own, please share. I would love to have more op options to tell future classes. So if you come up with something that you're like, man, I can really keep it straight if I call it blah, blah, blah. Hey, share that with me. I can help someone else in the future. I can credit you for it. All right. Now, we've got one more piece of vocab we need to talk about. The substance that gets reduced is called the oxidizing agent. Now, what do I mean by agent? Agent means allows to occur. Allows to occur. Agent means allows to occur. So, for instance, the example I like to use, if you've got an indoor cat, all right, let's just pretend you've got an indoor cat. The cat's not allowed to go outside. You leave the door open and the cat gets out. You are the escape agent. You're what allowed the cat to escape, right? You leaving the door open allow the cat to escape. You are the escape agent. If you are the oxidizing agent, what do you think that means? That means you allowed someone else to get oxidized. So if you're allowing someone else to get oxidized, what's happening to you? Because remember, these go hand in hand. If I'm letting someone else get oxidized, that means that I'm actually getting reduced. Does this make sense? These are opposite each other. If I'm getting reduced, that makes me the oxidizing agent because I'm allowing somebody else to get oxidized. Likewise, if I'm the reducing agent, that means I'm allowing someone else to get reduced because I'm getting oxidized. You see how they're opposite each other, okay? If you get oxidized, you're allowing someone else to be reduced, makes you the reducing agent. So these are opposite each other because agent means allows to occur, okay? If you get reduced, you're allowing someone else to get oxidized. And maybe, you know, the next time you're driving down the highway, sometimes you'll see these on like, tanker trucks. It'll say oxidizer. Have you ever noticed that on a tanker truck? It'll say oxidizer. Well, that means that it allows something to get oxidized. So if you spill that chemical on the you know, side of the road, it's getting reduced, it's allowing something else to get oxidized. So an oxidizer is something 
um, that is actually itself getting reduced, right? So learn something else to get oxidized. So like I said, you have to have both. You have to have both. You can't have two oxidations or two reductions. So if you're doing your before and after and you're like, I've got two oxidations, well, something's wrong. You need to go back and double check your numbers, okay? Because you can't have one without the other. They go hand in hand. So this is an experiment that we've actually done in lab, something very similar. We didn't use zinc, we um, used aluminum, but I kind of used a couple other ones, right? Some sort of metal giving electrons to a cation. The cation becomes the metal, and the metal becomes the cation. That's oxidation and reduction right there. So let's do this one together. I'll give you a second to jot it down. There's the reaction. So we want to know what's oxidized, and we want to know what's reduced. So what you're going to do first is you're going to give everybody an oxidation number. And then any substances with numbers that do not change, we're going to ignore them. We're going to think of them like a spectator on because if your oxidation number isn't changing before to after, you're not doing anything. Just like if you start out as Ag plus and you end up as Ag plus, you're not doing anything. You're just spectating. So first of all, we're going to go through and assign oxidation numbers to everybody using the method that we just spent the last hour doing. So some of these will be easy because they're monatomic ions. Some of them you might have to think about for a minute. And if you need to make a chart, great. If you can do it in your head, great. So here's my reaction. Let's go through and assign oxidation numbers. This is a monatomic ion. Does the number eight in front have anything to do with the oxidation number? No, that eight just tells me that they're eight. Okay. So the oxidation number here is what? Plus one, All right. Okay, this is MnO4 minus, oxygen's minus two times four is minus eight. So what does that make manganese? If this part's minus eight, this part must be plus seven, right? What's the oxidation number here? Monatomic ion, so what is it? Plus two, what's this one? Plus three, what's this one? Plus two. Again, this four just tells me how many. Hydrogen is in group one. Group one elements are always plus one. Oxygen, this is not hydrogen peroxide, right? That'd be minus two. So we're just using our oxidation number rules that we just learned. Now, we're gonna ignore anything that doesn't change. Look at those before to afters. There are two spectators here. What are the ones that are not changing? Can anyone identify them? There are two. Which ones aren't changing? I'll give you the first one. H plus, right? H plus starts out as plus one, it ends as plus one, so it's not doing anything. What's the other one that's not changing? Oxygen, right? Oxygen starts out as minus two, it ends as minus two, it's a spectator. So we're gonna just ignore them. They're not doing anything, they're just hanging out. So we're ignoring the spectators, they're not doing anything interesting. So now what we're left with is we're comparing manganese before to after and iron before to after, right? So manganese goes from plus seven to plus two. Plus seven's up here, plus two's down here. Did it lose electrons or did it gain electrons? Electrons are negative. It gained, right? Let's pretend your happiness value is plus seven right now. And then I said, put away everything, we're doing a quiz. Your happiness value is probably now at plus two, right? I've brought it down, I've added something negative. So that one is a gain of electrons. Going from plus two to plus three, what's that? That's a loss, right? That's losing something negative makes your number go up. So manganese is being what? Oxidized or reduced? It is being reduced, right? That's the GER step. And iron two is being oxidized. That's the LEO step. Make sense? Oops. I didn't give you a handout, so I'm just gonna put them on the board.
Manganese is reduced. Iron is a iron two is oxidized. So if I asked you what's the oxidizing agent, what would it be? The oxidizing agent. Manganese, right. Whatever gets reduced is the oxidizing agent. And what about what's the reducing agent? What's the reducing agent? The iron two, right. All right. I think I've got some problems in here. Yes, I do. All right. So this one shouldn't take you very long because it's all monatomic ions. Determine what's oxidized and what's reduced. Determine the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. I'm going to pause the recording. Let's go over this one. So assigning oxidation numbers should take you all of five seconds here. Why? They're all monatomic ions, right? So you just look at the charge. Yes. So cerium, that's what CE is, is reduced, right? Because it goes from plus four to plus three. That's a reduction. That number goes down, making it the oxidizing agent, the cerium four. And the tin two was oxidized, right? Because it went from plus two to plus four. And if you're oxidized, that makes you the reducing agent. Remember that these are the opposite of each other. If you're reduced, you're the oxidizing agent. If you're oxidized, you're the reducing agent. Because agent means allows to occur. Durr and Leo. Do we agree? Any questions on this one? All right. Try this one. Now you know the formula for hydrochloric acid, so I shouldn't have to give that to you. Aluminum metal reacts with hydrochloric acid, produce hydrogen gas and aluminum chloride. So this time you gotta write the formula. What's oxidized? What's reduced? What's the oxidizing agent? What's the reducing agent? I'll pause it and let's try this one. All right, let's look at this one. So we have to write the equation, right? So this is more true to what you'd see on a test. Of course, this isn't going to be on exam three, but it will be on final, right? Because the way the semester fell this semester, sometimes it ends up on exam three, other semesters it doesn't. So depending on how the semester falls, this semester, this isn't going to be on exam three, but sometimes in the past it has been on exam three. It just depends on how the semester gets chopped up. But anyway, we have to write the formulas, right? We have to write the formulas. Now, if you forgot to balance this, would that have any effect on your oxidation numbers? No, so that's the good news, right? If you forgot to put those coefficients. Aluminum metal and hydrogen gas are the two easy ones because they are both what? What's this one and this one? They're both plus eight, right? What are they? They're pure elements, so what would they be? Zero, right. So HCl, is plus one and minus one. And AlCl3 is plus three and minus one. All right, chlorine is not changing, so we can ignore it. So aluminum went from zero to plus three, making it oxidized. Hydrogen went from plus one to zero, making it reduced. There's the Leo, there's the Gur. And Cl's just the spectator. If you made a mistake, do you see where you made it? It's fine to make mistakes. It's important to learn from them. Any questions on this problem? All right, do this one. Another practice with formulas. Combustion of methane. So that's a good review for formulas and equations and all that great stuff that will all be on the final. Combustion of methane. What is combustion? What does it involve? What is it produced? Think about that. Write the formulas. Write the equation. Decide what gets oxidized and what gets reduced. Then decide what the oxidizing and reducing agents are.
Okay, so first of all, we need to remember how to do a combustion reaction, right? That's a reaction with what substance? Combustion is a reaction with O2, right? And this is combustion of a hydrocarbon, so what are we going to make? H2O and CO2, right? So we're ignoring hydrogen, right? It's, it's not changing. Carbon gets oxidized. It gets really oxidized, right? It goes from negative 4 to positive 4. That's a big jump. So that's oxidized, it makes it the reducing agent. And oxygen goes from zero to minus two. Now you can compare zero to minus two here or zero to minus two here. Either way, it's still zero to minus two. Okay, so that makes it reduced. If you made a mistake, do you see where you made it? All right. Here's one for you. To, oh, actually, I don't want to do that one. Ooh, this will be a good one to end on. Here's the reaction. I've already written the reaction for you. I've already balanced it for you. I should save you some time. So you give me what's oxidized and what's reduced. I'll pause the recording. I'll give you several minutes to do this one because I know it's going to take some thinking. All right, let's go over this one. So we have to sign our oxidation numbers. Right, our two elements are zero and zero. And we've got some spectators to ignore, right? Nitrogen and oxygen are both not changing, right? Nitrogen starts as plus five and ends as plus five. Oxygen starts as minus two and ends as minus two. So we can ignore both of those. Oops, oops, back one. So iron goes from zero to plus three. And copper goes from plus two to zero. Do we agree? Do we agree? I'm going to throw this one in here just for you to try. You can jot it down if you want to try it, and then I can give you the answer real quick. So just jot it down so you have one more example in your notes. Permanganate and oxalate producing manganese two and carbon dioxide. Just so you have one more example, since it's here in the slide, Got another minute or two. Just jot it down so you have one more example. Because the more examples you have in your notes, right, the more efficient they will be as a study tool. So just another example since we've got the time. Permanganate and oxalate producing manganese two and carbon dioxide. So we go through and we give everybody an oxidation number. Notice oxygen is not changing, so we ignore it. So manganese is reduced and carbon is oxidized. So once you've got this example, one more example for your notes, you're free to go. And I will see you on Wednesday. Have a good day. Let me just stop the recording real quick.